Hello friends, welcome to my first YouTube video ever. I wanted to kick off my channel with some introductions and encouragements while I bring you all along on a laid back summer day in the life. Hello, I'm Stacy, a wife and homemaker of 17 years and a homeschooling mom to eight children. I help equip Christian women to keep their homes with excellence while keeping their hearts abiding in Christ. Welcome to Abiding Home. We try to start out our days with Bible time. Usually my husband leads it, but if he isn't home in the mornings, then I will lead it as a part of our homeschool. Today we're listening to the audio Bible while my husband feeds the baby and I do a little bit of preparations for our trip to the pool. The children and I are already in our swim clothes. Next up is animal chores. The breakfast and inside chores were completed before I started videoing. Usually my oldest daughter takes care of the animal chores alone in the mornings because she enjoys the quiet time outside alone and farm chores are her favorite. Today, however, we are all pitching in and getting the job done quickly so we can head out to the pool as soon as possible. On our little homestead, we have chickens, goats, dogs, and a cat with kittens. This probably could go without saying, but we do not believe that all Christians have to homestead. I know that is a stereotype that floats around, but just so you know, on the front end, we do not believe that homesteading is more holy or anything like that. God has placed us all in different circumstances and we can live for his glory in a variety of different situations. It isn't where you get your food that makes you righteous. It is only through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ that anyone can be made right before a holy God. Of course, true saving faith does change our hearts and the way we live our lives in obedience to the scripture and set apart from the world. But homesteading is clearly not commanded in scripture. This just so happens to be where the Lord has placed our family. We made it to the pool and today my husband decided to come with us for the morning and to head to work after lunch. My husband flips houses and sometimes his schedule is flexible and allows us to sneak in special family time like this here and there. It's a huge blessing to our family that we don't take for granted. We recently got a membership at a local YMCA with the goal of teaching our children to swim. It's an important life skill that we want them to all be equipped with and we know it will keep them safe around water. Also, it's just a fun way to beat the summer heat here in East Tennessee. working at home, but I equally love getting out of the house, away from the chores, away from the homeschool, simply just to focus on spending time together. It's truly time well spent. In Titus 2, the older women are commanded to teach the younger women to love their husbands, love their children, and to be keepers at home. All of this has value and should help us dictate how to spend our time. It can be easy to lean too heavily into one and neglect the other. It's important to remember that setting aside time to connect with and love our husbands and children is a part of the productive work that God has called us to. So don't feel bad to set aside time to just enjoy your husband and your children. But at the same time, we shouldn't use that as an excuse to neglect our housework. It truly is a balancing act. And the Lord is helping us grow in our callings as women more and more each day as we submit our lives to him. No one does it perfectly, but we can do it faithfully. We are back at the house now, and it's our routine to clean out the van after each outing so that it can be decent for us to ride in the next time we need to go somewhere. It only takes a few minutes when everyone pitches in, and it makes a big difference. Also, this sweet baby is getting a quick nap, and I will take her in as soon as the children finish. 
I'm letting her get a little rest because I know she will wake up as soon as I move her. We typically do not cook for lunch. Instead, we do sandwiches, convenience foods, or leftovers. This is especially helpful to keep our momentum going on school or home project days. After each meal, the children have some simple chores. We all work together to clean up the kitchen and dining room so that we'll be ready for the next meal. I'm a big advocate for delegating chores to children so that they will learn valuable life skills and so that the work doesn't all fall on one person. Many hands make light work. That's one of the blessings of having a large family. After lunch, the children have quiet rest, audiobook, or calm playtime while the baby takes her afternoon nap. Today, during our rest time, I'm getting our laundry started and tidying up the living room. Some afternoons, I put my feet up and rest as well. Other days, if I'm feeling energetic, I just keep working. It's important to find a little time each day to focus on housework. Giving children chores is helpful, but our homes are primarily our responsibility as God has assigned us wives and mamas with the task of being homemakers. Children are learning, but they also need time to be children. They learn so much simply by watching our diligence and the way we approach our housekeeping with an attitude of contentment. If our children hear us grumbling about how much work we have and how hard it is, then it shouldn't surprise us if they grumble at their chore assignments. Much more is caught than taught. If you are a mama, you already know this, but cleaning and chores can often be interrupted by the needs of the children. It's important for us to use those opportunities to respond with patience instead of getting frustrated that they are interrupting our work. I recently heard another mama say, we are raising children, not houses. And I thought that was such a sweet reminder. One day the children will be grown and the house won't need as much cleaning and we will dearly miss these little interruptions. time and quiet play, the children asked me if we could have tea. I have a collection of old teapots and teacups, and tea parties is something we often enjoy together. It's a nice way to connect with the children. I've also found it to be a great activity to do for read-alouds or while teaching a homeschool family subject. It keeps little hands and mouths occupied, and the warm tea seems to have a very calming effect, which is really nice. decided to pour myself a cup of tea as well and it's time to set out some meat for dinner. I don't typically meal plan. Instead, I keep a well-stocked freezer and pantry with all the things I need to make whichever meal fits my time frame and energy level for the day. While the meat thaws, I am switching over laundry and pulling in my son for a little mama time. The other children are now outside playing and my older girls probably reading or doing something that they enjoy. I try to pull in a child as a helper to get some one-on-one -on -one time with them. It's also a great method for keeping a child out of trouble who may be having a hard time with independent or sibling play. We have so many tools in our tool belt for training and instructing our children. And I'm hoping to talk much more about this here on my channel in the future, so be sure that you're subscribed. <music> Outside to check on the children and visit with them. They've been playing and enjoying God's creation. My nine-year-old was showing me this beautiful butterfly, and then we were admiring how our mama cat is nursing her kittens and how God has made them to know just what to do. His creation has such beauty and order. 
and there's always so much to see and learn about. We have been participating in the 1000 hours outside challenge and we're almost up to 800 hours. I honestly never imagined we would be this far along in our challenge by September. I guess I didn't realize how much time we typically spend outside, but the challenge has been so much fun to work together on and the children get so excited every time we earn a new badge on our 1000 hours outside app. While the children continue to play outside, I am grilling up the bratwurst and starting some simple side items inside the house. I love grilling out in the summer. It's one of my favorite ways to cook. I paired the dinner with some organic fries topped with mozzarella cheese and some green beans from our garden. We will top the bratwurst with our chow chow relish that we canned this spring. The children and I are working together to tidy the living room and set the table. Then we will eat, do chores, and have some family time. I'm going to put the camera away so I can focus on them, but I will pop back in after everyone is in bed. When the children are asleep and the house is quiet, my husband and I usually spend some time connecting and talking. Then I take some time to do my Bible study and praying. Currently our church is going through the book of 1 Thessalonians on Sundays and on Wednesday nights we are going through a study called Quieting a Noisy Soul. I like to take time to study and review what we're learning and I'm also working through the workbook for the Wednesday night study. I have been really blessed by this study. I feel like it's made a huge impact on my heart and helped me to process my emotions biblically and given me some great insights to help me take my thoughts captive and make them obedient to Jesus. And now it's time to lay down and get some sleep. I'm so glad that you joined me today and I hope it was encouraging and that it inspired you to find joy in glorifying the Lord in your own homemaking and motherhood journey.